Rabi'ul Awwal, a time in which Salah on the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam should really be what keeps us busy. It doesn't mean you're not going to do other things. Remember, very important battles happen during Ramadan, um, let alone any other month. The, the Salah on the Messenger, peace be upon him, is a shifa. And I remember somebody mocking that one time, right? They say, like, we treat salawats as if it's a magic potion. Well, I would say magic potion wouldn't be enough uh, of an analogy. They say he, they treat salawats on the Prophet, peace be upon him, as if it's a magic potion. And I'm like, huh? No, this is far s- superior to a magic potion. Uh, but here we go. The Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was bestowed with unmatched beauty and splendor was described that the Sahaba would visit the Messenger, peace be upon him, and even non-Muslims would come to Medina or into Mecca, and they would get caught just staring at the Prophet's face, alayhi salatu wasalam, and the proportions were perfect. There is a type of what you could say is uh, an objective measure to beauty. It does exist. Um, it does exist. There are proportions that... Are, that Indicate perfection. Now, that doesn't mean if a person doesn't have those proportions that they're not beautiful. No, there could be beauty in a certain way, but some people who have different proportions as Allah's created things, they they may be attractive to like half the population, but not everybody, right? I believe there's a market for everybody when it comes to beauty. Someone will find you attractive in the world. The question is a few or a lot. And when it comes to Sayyid Al-Kunayn, alayhi salatu was salam, Everybody found him attractive. That's w- where the balance is. Some people could have slender faces and some people have wide faces. Some people could have wide bodies and slender bodies. All sorts of different proportions. There is a, it, uh, I don't disagree with people who say there is a beauty in everything. There is. But the question is, if this messenger وسلم, is meant for the whole world, then his beauty must be for the whole world. So there is that He's in the middle of everything, right? They say his skin was neither black nor was it white. It was, they say, a honey wheat with a little click to the lighter side. And how do they say that? Because in this, it, they, they described you as light if you turned reddish in the sun. And they described you as dark if you turned darker in the sun. And that's really how they, they, they used to define things. Uh, so the Prophet ﷺ, if you look at his hair, was neither one way or the other either. Neither was it very curly, neither was it totally straight. Now, do people love curly hair? Of course they do. It's extremely attractive to have curly hair. It is extremely attractive to have straight hair. But you need, Allah is sending a messenger that would appeal to everybody, not just to 50% of the people. And hence, his hair was wavy. So it has some straight... What does wavy mean? Part of it's straight and part of it curls, right? That's the definition of wavy. We find that his size and his build was what the majority of people would love on this earth when they look at a man. He So when it comes to height, he was in the middle of tall and short, but with a little bit on the tall side. And his width of his shoulders, they were broad. That's what you expect from a man. So there are certain things you don't want the middle, right? He had broad shoulders. It's what you expect. That's what's beautiful in a man. His hands were big. When you have a leader who's going to fight for you, you want him to have big, strong hands. It's not uh, so thin that you wonder, oh, no, he's too skinny. That doesn't mean someone thin can't lead. That doesn't mean someone small uh, uh, has no chance in life. No, it just means what is the majority honor and respect, right? And that's where how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was created. Sayyidina Hassan bin Thabit, on seeing the beauty of the Prophet, peace be upon him, famously said, as a kafir, who just minutes ago, Hassan bin Thabit, as a non-believing, as if he's a marketer, like a marketing uh, agent, was hired by Quraysh to lampoon the Prophet. And that's almost like hiring a marketing firm to go and say bad things about your opponent in an election or something like that. You're literally hiring a company to go dig up dirt and smear it all over. So these these poets were almost like people with 550 million YouTube uh, subscribers and 100 million Twitter followers. So there's extremely powerful voices in Mecca. When Hassan bin Thabit 
stands up and he's going to say, on Monday night, I'm going to recite a new qasida, a new poem. Everyone shows up. If you didn't show up, you asked, hey, who, who attended? What did he say? That's how these qasidas worked. And these were marketing people at that time. They offered Hassan bin Thabit a very, very handsome purse, a very good, nice amount of money. Okay. Very good amount of money. What do you want from this? Lampoon Muhammad. Go and say bad things about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. All right, so now what? Uh, he's on his way to Lampoon. He's thinking, you know, he's got time. Not the end of the world. He's got time. On the way while he's thinking, he's got his head down. Suddenly, he, someone's coming the other way. He looks up. And it's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When a person is lost in thought, something happens, your actual true reaction comes out. So he says, وَأَحْسَنُ مِنْكَ لَمْ تَرَ قَطُّ عَيْنِي وَأَجْمَلُ مِنْكَ لَمْ تَلِدِ النِّسَاءُ خُلِقْتَ مُبَرَّأً مِنْ كُلِّ عَيْبٍ كَأَنَّكَ قَدْ خُلِقْتَ كَمَا تَشَاءُ it's more beautiful than you, my eye has never seen. This is a man saying to another man. And he's an artist. Remember, he, they have an eye for beauty. They care about beauty. And more beautiful than you, no woman has ever given birth to. You've been created free from all blemishes and imperfections as though you were created just as you desired. That is the famous Sahabi Hassan bin Thabit. Immediately, he entered Islam. Hassan bin Thabit. And that line of two, two lines of poetry went all around. That's how uh, effective and impactful appearances. Appearances, uh, appearances are important. And that's why one of the attributes of prophets is that they're always attractive. They're always handsome. That's the attribute of prophets. Every prophet had a beautiful face, a perfect body, the highest height of intelligence, and a beautiful voice to listen to. There was never a prophet that had a, a voice that people would not want to hear. Every prophet was born of the highest stock of their, of, of their society. فَجَوْهَرُ الْحُسْنِ فِيهِ غَيْرُ مُنْقَسِمِ For in him is the undivided essence. Of all beauty. Jawharul Husni, like the root of beauty. It's not to be divided with anybody.